Hey everyone, welcome back to The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. This is episode number 80. Number 80. Only one player. Oh, really? Matt Tennyson. I was going to say. Yeah. I didn't know if there were any other ones. Yeah. No, just That's the only one. one I could think of off the top of my head, and I looked up to be sure, and I was like, oh, wow, he was the only one. Got a little fact about Matt Tennyson we'll get to right after the show open here. But first, I uh, want to let you guys know what we're having this episode. We've got the three games that happened this week, and uh, we'll also be talking a little bit about uh, Logan Couture doing a goalie comparison as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, Patrick Marlowe's return to the tank again in another jersey. Yeah. Uh, uh, our little spotlight episode that we're going to highlight a little bit, and uh, the week ahead, and oh, fancy hockey, fancy hockey. Right, this is the end of the regular season for fancy hockey. And there you go. You ready to start the show? Ready. Okay. Well, I want you guys to stick around because we're going to talk a little bit about a new show that Aaron and I are going to be doing where we do nothing but review dad shoes. So that fact I was talking about, I'm not sure if it's actually a fact or not, because I have to go back and check my sources, but um, there was the Matt Tennyson bobblehead that they had that one time, and I remember he had a concussion, I think it was right before they did the bobblehead night, and I'm like, that Uh. is the worst time to have a bobblehead for somebody right after they have the concussion. No, it's not on the set, actually. I thought we had one in here. I have one that uh, Super Key Group Joe actually painted with Wolfpack, which was our our, uh, beer league team at the time. And he did a really good job mm-hmm. painting in the facial hair because I had it growing out and everything. But that's neither here nor there. So let's go ahead and start talking uh, Sharks hockey here. So first game uh, this week, uh, a loss, Philadelphia in Philadelphia, 4-2. to two, And uh, I, we have a clip right off the hop here with, with Logan Couture, right? Yeah, let's just play it. Let's go ahead and play it. Play it well, set it up set a little bit. Yeah. Let's set it up a little bit. Uh, the kind of questions were, why did you play? Or how healthy were you? And then why did you play? And um, when he, he hadn't really practiced either. That right. was part of the part, main, mainly why they were asking and wondering why he was going. So here's the clip. Logan, uh, health wise, how are you dealing with the end of that game? No, I feel all right. I mean, wish I played a little bit better, but I'm okay. It seemed like you had some chances, just, just missed the net on a couple down. Yeah, by about seven feet. So. Uh, <laughs> Disappointing because uh, I score those goals or those chances, and we're uh, we're probably still playing right now. So, tough one. What was you know the, the, the decision to play tonight? I mean, obviously you weren't you weren't going to take any chances. It's just a matter of getting clear. <coughs> the doctors. Yeah, I was cleared. I mean, I still haven't gotten any practice, so it wasn't uh, you know my hands. I knew it weren't going to be great, but uh, figured you know it's been a, been a rough uh, couple of days. So. I feel like your return, at least, you know, obviously it's been some emotional couple of days around here. I'm sure you feel like your return, you know, at least helped to give a, a little bit of a boost in the beginning. Yeah, I thought we had a good first. Uh, you know, gave up some, some odd man rushes and they capitalized. So, so two, if you don't remember, Couture didn't really have a great game. He looked kind of out of place and bad and looked like he was coming back a little bit too early. Mm-hmm. Part of that's to do the fact that he did not do any practices. He did go on the road trip with them, and this was the last game of the road trip as well. Uh, he went on the road trip with him, wasn't really expected to play, but I think he was cleared by the doctors and he was probably itching to play. Yeah. Plus, what he said was we had a rough week, meaning the trade deadline exactly. happened and the, kind of the soul of the team kind of got ripped up a little bit. Uh, some guys didn't get traded. Joe Thornton didn't get traded. People probably thought he was going to. Yeah. Um, maybe some other players in there that did not get traded that they thought they might be. So mm-hmm. I think morale was really low and it was good for him to come back regardless he didn't play very well, um, but you get the jitters out and you know the rust worked off a little bit. Yeah. Come back and practice, and then you come home and you play another game. Yeah, and I think that to me that's kind of, you know, people question his captain ability really, right, uh, throughout the season. The Sharks haven't played very well, and they're saying, well, one of the things that's changed is Logan Couture is the captain now, and is he really captain material? To me, this kind of showcases that, yes, this is, this is captain material, right? When you're saying, you know, we've we've had a bit of a rough week here, right? He knows the morale is low in the locker room, like you just said. Mm-hmm. Um, and he, he wants to be back partially for that reason. Yes, he could re-injure himself. He's coming right off of injury, jumping straight in, didn't even get a practice. But to him, this team is more important than any of that stuff, and he's willing to jump in uh, even if he's not ready. And I, mean, I think that's that's that speaks volumes yeah. for me. And he kind of laughed at himself a little bit because he missed a shot. He's like, yeah, I yeah. missed it by like seven feet. Yeah. <laughs> so he wasn't... He's he's always kind of hard on himself, of as course. well as uh, not not as hard on others as he is on himself. But uh, he's a he's a very honest and good interview yeah. as usual. 
So from that game, we move on to a happier game, <laughs> a game at home, SAP, uh, the New Jersey Devils, Sharks take them on, and the first period doesn't go so hot. Now, one thing of note, the Philadelphia game, right? Yeah. Aaron Dell in net. They decide to put Martin Jones in net for the New Jersey game, right? And people, mm -hmm. of course, right? Oh, it's a loss. Martin Jones is in goal. Whatever. First two, first two uh, goals in the first period. There you go. Yeah. They so go down 2 nothing real quick. They go down 2 nothing. Jones is in net. And, of course, doom and gloom on Twitter. Everybody's upset. Whatever. Mm -hmm. So, but that game, it ends up going the right direction. Sharks right. come back. They tie it up. We go to overtime. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that I really wanted to highlight about this game is... Logan Couture kind of makes amends for his poor play in Philadelphia. He scores the game-winning goal, yes, in overtime. Um, I like one of the things you said during our live, which was that the New Jersey Devils didn't actually touch the puck. Yeah. Sharks won the face-off. They held possession the entire time. And, I mean, e even though that was like the end of their shift, Logan Couture puts it in. Now, it's not the goal from Logan Couture for me that was the impressive part of that goal. Mm -hmm. It was the setup by Kane. Kane did a lot of hard work, grabbed that puck. There were two defensemen kind of leaning towards him, and with his back to Couture, he kind of spins, does a nice little kind of a wrap pass, uh, gets it past both defensemen, and essentially just serves it to Couture on a silver platter. Here you go, score this goal. And um, it was just a great play by Kane. So for me, that was kind of like the highlight of that overtime. Not so much the goal, but the way that the goal got got made. Oh, totally. Yeah, yeah. Kane Kane put in a lot of work on that. But that mat that line was kind of overmatching New Jersey's line. New Jersey was also a team like the Sharks, who were expected to be either in the playoff hunt mm -hmm. or in the playoffs by at this point in the season. Uh, before the whole season had started, um, they had added so many players to their team and and made it look like a contending team. Yeah. So they were also kind of gutted at the trade deadline, trading away a lot more pieces. So these two teams were kind of, um, both had a rough week, I guess, yeah. the week before. Yeah. Um, but they were mismatched totally on the beginning of overtime, and you could tell just from the face-off. Winning the face-off, not even be able to touch the puck, really. And if you look, this is like a, a um, textbook play on how to play overtime in a new three-on-three three format which a lot of teams try and replicate and do. Uh, not that the Sharks are the trend setters, but this is kind of the trend that the whole league is going. Possession doesn't matter. Just try and keep possession and w hard, you know, work the other team because you also are on the long change. So yeah. you try and keep those guys on the ice as much as you can without exerting too much energy, and then you can take it to them, which the Sharks kind of did at the right. end because it was the end of the shift and they yeah. were tired. But yeah, a great win. Martin Jones shut the door after the first period. So that's two periods plus... 30, 40 seconds into overtime sure. of shutout hockey, which then leads into the next game against Pittsburgh. There you go. And he shut out the Pittsburgh Penguins. So that is five periods and then some of shutout hockey. Five periods and 30 seconds to your estimation. Plus, you yeah. know, two minutes into the first period <laughs> from the last goal. Whatever. Right, yeah. No, so, I get what you're saying, though. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's it's five-plus periods of, yeah. of shutout hockey. And I think a lot of that, you know, he's he's been working with Evgeny Nabokov, you know, a lot. And I think that's that's paying off. Definitely, you know, that's, that's the big thing. And I, I'd say we can give kudos to Nabokov for yeah. becoming a very good goalie coach. Uh, you know, we seen you've seen him at the practices. How he's kind he's of hilarious. unconventional in a way, right? Full on hilarious. This guy. If you want to go see, uh, you know, a, a show essentially on ice, <laughs> there's either Disney or there's Evgeny Nabokov. Okay, this guy is he he's a goof out there, right? He's always messing around. And I, you know what? I don't give enough props to Mike Ricci. Mike Ricci is just as much of a goof and he's he's put a lot of really hard work into Kevin LeBanc's shot lately. Uh, Timo Meyer. Uh, I think I have might have some video of it, but we probably won't be able to post it here, but um, Ricci's got his stick out over LeBanc's shoulder every time he shoots and LeBanc has to sink lower than the stick every time. So hmm. something about his shot that Mike Ricci's saying, no, you need to do this, and he's put a lot of work in. But again, they're loose. They're they're jovial on the ice, right? So they're messing around. They've got their stick behind guys pushing a skate, you know, and the guy turns around to see who it is, and they can't figure out who it is at first, and then there's <laughs> Mike laughing, you know, so, okay, I know who it is. But, you know, they do put in a whole lot of hard work with these guys, and we see some of it paying off, I think, especially with the goaltending. So, um, you know, again, Aaron Dell, we could see his game was really on point for a very long time there, right? He was taking over while Jones was kind of faltering um, multiple starts in a row. This time, first time since 
what 2020, in 2020. first time in 2020 yeah. because i think the last uh start that uh jones had in not back-to-back -back games but consecutive games yeah. was the 28th of december and the 31st of december and then after that it was all aaron dell in terms yep. of multiple games in a row mm -hmm. so um yeah i mean again kudos to the goaltending coach kudos to martin jones five periods plus shutout hockey i'd say uh, kudos to bob bugner because he's yeah. kind of he has to read you know which goalie to play every game, yeah. and who's kind of, I don't want to say hot hand, kind of hot hand, I guess. Um, but, I mean, Jones has had a pretty spectacular February. Granted, two of those wins were shutouts, so it kind of skews the stats a little bit. But um, one of them is against uh, Minnesota. Was yeah. that the other? The first, the first one, yeah. two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. uh, they were two weeks apart, Yeah, the whole, the both shutouts. But... Minnesota is not that terrible of a team. It's not like it was the New Jersey Devils and sure. Ottawa Senators who were at the bottom. So, um, so a shot's a shot. He still made thirty saves in that second shutout. So, hey, uh, the Penguins are in a playoff spot. So yeah. there's a playoff team, playoff caliber team. Absolutely. Yeah. So good on Jones. Yeah. Yeah. So there was a Kerr's article actually that was kind of talking about you know had had the amount of games played for Martin Jones kind of finally caught up with him. And, you know, maybe that was part of it. Maybe he just needed that big, long break. Because Martin Jones, over whatever span they were talking about, probably yep. since he's entered the league, really, with, with the Sharks, has played the most games among uh, goaltenders of any goaltender. So it's just a, you know, a question is, has it finally caught up with him? Is that what was causing him to maybe be a little bit off of his game? Because, again, he's a more systematic goalie, as you said, during the live. Mm -hmm. He's not as much of a... Um, Kind of erratic goalie Reflex. like Aaron Dell is. Yeah, yeah, like he's kind of he's kind of all over the place. But that's the way Aaron Dell plays, and that's what makes him successful for him. For Aaron, I'm sorry, for uh, Martin Jones, mm -hmm. that's not the way he plays the game. That's not what makes him successful. What makes him successful is being set, being very on his angles. Uh, that's the way he plays uh, best. So, has the amount of games played affected his ability? To play well, I think was the question that Kurz had post or, uh, posed in there. Right. And I think, you know, having some days off, I think, it, yeah, it's absolutely, it's helped him out. And again, getting some rest, getting that time with Evgeny Dubokov, it seems to be paying off. Uh, we hope that this is kind of like, I don't know, some foresight, if you will, into next season, kind of getting our old Jones back, right? Because mm -hmm. that's kind of what we've been, been hoping for. We're hoping to see that guy return because he's he has been so good up until... You know, these past couple seasons, the, I mean, the numbers kind of speak for themselves. Although, again, I still feel like the defense could be better in front of him. Um, he has kind of fallen off a bit. So hopefully this is a sign that he's on the right track again. Right. That makes me feel a little more comfortable going into the next season. Yeah. Uh, assuming that Dell is not re-signed and Jones is taken over as the de facto starter. I don't think the days of Jones playing 65 games are around anymore. I think they, they notice a difference when he's rested. He's playing a little bit better. So I'm sure that that's going to be taken into account. So personally, I mean, this is kind of getting ahead of ourselves, but over the summer, I'd like to see a goalie brought in. Um, I don't, well, you'd asked me earlier in the live if an AHL goalie came up mm -hmm. and from the Barracuda up for the Sharks for uh, as a backup. Maybe not so much now, just because of the fact that his numbers are not so good when he is heavily relied upon. Um, so I'd like to see them go out and get somebody else to be a 1A, 1B kind of tandem. Um, I'd feel I'd feel better about the goaltending in that in okay. that situation. That's fair enough. So there was a, a, a tweet actually that we wanted to showcase here, and it's uh, Patrick Marlowe's wife, Christina Marlowe. Sure. Yeah. Thought it was pretty cool. You want to set this one yeah, up? Yeah. Sure. Uh, this was Patrick Marlowe returning to the arena to play as a member of the Pittsburgh Penguins since he got traded last week. Um, it just so happened that they were playing the Sharks this week in San Jose. Yeah. It's kind of cool. So uh, I'm sure, I don't even know if the kids are, I'm sure they're still around here. I, I don't think they would move out to Pittsburgh. No. So um, it was nice to get uh, to see their dad. Mm -hmm. And uh, here's a picture of Christina walking with their four sons, all in Patrick Marlowe, <laughs> <laughs> Pittsburgh Penguins jerseys, probably fresh off the press. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, going to the game and she put a little funny caption up there. Um, so uh, yeah, it, it's kind of cool. It wasn't as... Um, Tear jerking, I guess, yeah. as when he was on the Toronto Maple Leafs making his first game back here. Yeah, well, maybe a little tear jerking for the Pens. They lose their sixth straight in that game. Uh, this is a team that went out to get Patrick Marlowe to bolster up to go <laughs> yeah. playoffs, and they're kind of uh, falling off a bit. Another tear jerker, actually, uh, Jake Milton.
going down with a lower body injury because Patrick Hornquist is a explicative delete. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, 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 we're not going to show that or anything uh, with the Eesh. angle. But that's, that's one of those clips that you don't want to Google unless you're one of those people that likes to see those kinds of things because it was not pretty. It, it's not pretty. It's For me, I mean, I could see it and it didn't gross me out, but it was, yeah, it, it's it's not a good one. So nah. he's going to be out for a while. Um, as How much bad luck can we get this uh, season when it comes to injuries? Especially Middleton, man. I feel like he just came back, yeah. and he was finally getting some playing time with Dylan moved, so he, he's in the lineup as a regular, and then he gets hurt again. This, I feel really bad for him. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the whole the season as a whole, uh, just so many injuries, just one after the other. And it, I feel like that happens when your team is not good and you're not doing well in the standings. Um, I feel like guys maybe take a little bit extra time to make sure that they're fully healthy, so then those injuries kind of make it even feel longer yeah. and worse than what they are than if they were in a, in a spot to play or a, a compete. So I think it's a little bit of both. Um, but yeah, just very unfortunate. And the Sharks have been fortunate over the years. I'd say in the last almost decade, they haven't really had that many major injuries. Um, part of it is Patrick Marlowe. Look at his Iron Man streak. Yeah, he true. hasn't missed a game since 2009, I think. I, I, I don't even. It's it's ridiculous. Whatever yeah. it is, it's and he was ridiculous. mostly was that was mostly with the Sharks yeah. too. So you always have most of your guys. I mean, even Joe Thornton. Other than those two knee injuries, he pretty much doesn't miss any games. Mm -hmm. Never really missed any. Um, so yeah, I, the Sharks have been lucky in this year. Just very unlucky in yeah. terms of health. Well, we got uh, Shimmick back this season, which was great, and he's been playing pretty good defensively as well. There was. A couple uh, funny things that happened in that Penguins game, actually, with him. There was a well, it's funny about Hornquist yeah. too, because it didn't sound like he was a big fan of Hornquist. <laughs> no, he was not. So yeah, I guess. Uh, well, we got a clip here. We're going to go ahead and play, play it in its entirety here. Yeah. Um, there's a whole lot of broken English, but uh, enjoy <laughs> this clip of uh, the post game interview with Radim Shimmick. That, that thing with Hornquist was just kind of a spur of the moment kind of thing. Yeah, but it was a couple moments there. He's still slashing uh, Jonesy. Or somebody and I I had to do it. It was for team and like no problem for me. <laughs> uh, what happened on that uh, play with a uh, Dominique Simone in a corner? I don't know. I I was like hard in corner. It was a battle for Park and he, he stayed on on ice. But I don't know what happened there. So just kind of uh, some funny lines out of it. You know, the one thing that stood out to me, and I think you said it too, um, we, we go back and we listen to Tomas Hurdle yeah. when he first came into the league. Yeah. And that's what it sounded like, right? Yeah, it reminds me of a young Tomas Hurdle that's exactly. still kind of, maybe his second year, third year, where he's getting his English is getting a little yeah. bit better. Right? Yeah, he's yeah. starting to knock it down, right? He's getting mm -hmm. the English in there, but it's still pretty broad. You know what, though? Um, it, it'll be funny, I think, to kind of go back uh, after you know maybe like five years in or something like that yeah. where his English is way more fluent and then... You can kind of go back and see, uh, you know, kind of where he came from with the, the whole language thing. It's it's really incredible that these guys, um, with 20-something-year-olds, I mean, I couldn't do it for sure, um, you know, picking up a brand new language like that. It's just, it's insane. And the fact that you're a professional player and then you're picking up a language like that, to me, is just bonkers. Helps when you immerse yourself in yeah, the totally. culture, really, and oh, you're yeah. living here. Yeah, if you move to another country and you're living there for... A year or two, right. you're going to pick up some stuff, right? Yeah. Some basic stuff. So one of the things he referenced in there was the uh, the Hornquist uh, pushing and shoving and whatnot. He was saying, you know, Hornquist was hacking away at Jonesy or somebody, is what he said. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he just didn't like that. But one of the things that happened uh, during that altercation was Shimmick actually pushed the referee. Now this is one of those things well, that linesman. I'm sorry, the linesman. Yeah. Right, well, yeah. okay, a zebra. Yeah. Um, so he, he gave him a push, and uh, that's you know. A no-no in this league, and nobody knows that better than Evander Kane. <laughs> right, right. So uh, we actually got this question during the live. Which, by the way, if you're not uh, listening to the lives, you're not tuning in. Please do hit that subscribe button, hit the bell, so you know when we are going live. Because the conversations we have with our fan base mm -hmm. and the comments that they bring up, a lot of fun. Sometimes we get it, you know, something for the show, like right now, for instance. Right, right? exactly. Uh, anyway, uh, so Kane had said essentially, or sorry, he, they were saying, "Do you think Kane has any problem with the fact that Shimmick?" got away with the push on the linesman and essentially Kane got called out for that, right? And there was We got suspended yeah, for yeah. it, not just called out. Well exactly, that's yeah. what I mean. Yeah. So, you know, he gets the suspension for it. And I don't think Kane is sitting there rooting for Shimmick to get suspended for three no. games or anything like that. It's nothing to that uh, you know effect. But I think it brings up a very valid point. You know, what's what's the difference uh, between Shimmick's shove of an official 
and Kane's shove of an official, right? Especially Kane's came after the official tackled him. Right. You know? Yeah. So uh, I think maybe a little bit in Shimmick's defense, and this doesn't excuse it at all, by the way. I, Shimmick was staring right at Hornquist the whole time. I don't think he actually knew that that linesman was not a penguin coming in. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not sure if he even recognized that or not. But again, you have to be you know responsible for your actions and... He, he shoved him. So you would think that he gets the same punishment that Kane does. It wasn't even looked yeah. at. I wonder if they'll fine him later or not. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. At more of just be like, hey, we didn't suspend you, but we saw it. And right. Don't do it again kind of thing. You know? It'll be, I'll be interesting to see if that comes out later this week or not. Yeah, Probably we'll have, not. To, uh, have to keep our eyes open and our ears yeah. open. So uh, moving on from that, you know, we talked a little bit about goaltending already, but um, there were some goalie comparisons that we wanted to draw. Now, a lot of people are going to have a problem with us doing <laughs> um, it doesn't matter right. go ahead just jump straight in all right go so we looked at the whole month of february and the split <laughs> stats between uh jonesy and and dell and jones actually only played five games dell played eight so dell had a majority of the games right. um dell went uh what was he three and five in those eight games started uh 901 save percentage 3.17 goals against average Jonesy, with five games played, went three and two, two of those being shutouts, so mm -hmm. he had two shutouts, uh, a 951 save percentage, and a 1.4 gills against average. So those are not those are pretty elite numbers. I'm yeah. not saying that Jones is elite. He played some, you know, had some luck, whatever. Played, he played well. Let's just yeah. say he played well. Um, this is why I'm kind of getting a little bit of hope, like seeing, okay, now he's progressing, he's getting a little bit better, he's getting back to where he was. Now I'm not expecting him to have a 951 save percentage. Why not? <laughs> Nobody does. <laughs> uh, but I, I'm, you know, the next month in March, maybe we see him take over the crease a little bit more. Well, more like we than, said, like more we than said. the eight five split, right? Yeah, but I mean, like again, like we said, he this is the first time he's played in consecutive games since it's been two 20, months twenty, right? So maybe this is the start of him kind of taking his crease back. Yeah, who knows? Yeah. So anyway, it's we're giving kudos to where kudos are due, which is right now to Martin Jones. Very good. Yeah. Okay, and we're gonna go ahead and so that was the end of all that, that week that happened there, right? So <laughs> we'll just jump straight into the next week here. And sure. one of the first things actually that we want to talk about um, before we jump into that week, because this is actually happening on the last game of the week ahead. And it's, everything was really confusing right there. Uh, there's a, a spotlight episode that we have, and it's featuring one of these things. Now, if you want to talk, can we put the spotlight up in the corner or something so people can click on it maybe? Sure. Okay, we'll do yeah. that. It's up there somewhere. Uh, <laughs> but the spotlight episode that we have, we talked about a few things. The new Juno Lounge that's uh, opened up at SAP Center. It's basically right where we had the Doug Wilson, Doug Murray, Doug Benson interview. If you happen to catch that one, if you didn't, please go back and check out that one. It's a very good interview. I liked mm -hmm. it a lot. It was a lot of fun for me. Uh, they've taken that area, which was essentially dead space, and turned it into a bar. And it's got two nice bars. Uh, you know, full uh, full bar, I guess you could yeah. say, 16 taps, um, seating and tables and f TVs. They got a lot of really great stuff happening over there, and that's all featured in that spotlight. So do check out that spotlight, which it should be out already, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, so, uh, yeah, give that one a look. Um, from there, the other thing that we were spotlighting, uh, we'll go ahead and talk about when we got about, uh, talk about the week ahead. So why don't we just jump into the week ahead? Sure. Okay. Let's do it. So first game of this week, mm -hmm. we have is on Tuesday, I believe. Tuesday, and we're playing against Toronto. Okay. Which is going to be just a media crazy <laughs> something storm <laughs> right. on uh, Tuesday whenever Toronto comes into town. Uh, Toronto is still in a playoff spot, so mm -hmm. but they, I feel like they've been kind of free falling the last month. Uh, they were, I, I think they were leading the division, and now they're just kind of coming down. Now, it's kind of funny. It would be great to go back and look and compare John Tavares. If John Tavares had <laughs> come to San Jose and Eric Carlson did not, mm. what would have happened? And right now, like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I still think Carlson was a better bet. I mean, look how far Toronto got last year yeah. in the playoffs, right? Uh, Tavares didn't completely carry him on his back. That's a whole other discussion. Anyway. Toronto's coming in town on Tuesday, <laughs> and, uh, along with a bunch of their media coming from yeah. Canada. So yeah. it's going to be a big game. Uh, it'll be great. It'll be good. Uh, you can probably still get tickets, so yeah. you should go check it out. And hopefully there would be less uh, Toronto <laughs> Maple Leaf uh, jerseys on in the stadium. Did you have something to add? Uh, to well, yeah, you said you want to move on. But the one thing that I will say about that comparison between Tavares and Carlson is that Tavares would have played more games. 
uh, uh, than, than Carlson, so maybe. And the other thing that we've been talking about, if you've been following the show, and I hope you have, uh, that you know maybe it makes sense to move Burns. Now, why did we say maybe it makes sense to move Burns? Uh, because there's two elite defensemen, puck moving defensemen. You have less turnovers. Yes, because this is from our live elite puck moving defensemen tend to have more giveaways. Mm-hmm. So if we only had one elite puck moving defenseman, maybe less giveaways. Maybe that helps us out. And then if the puck is getting up the ice more often, John Tavares maybe gets his uh, his hands on that puck. So uh, now we're I'm kind of thinking. Now you just brought this up just now, and you got me uh, you got me wondering. All right, get on with it. I'm I'm done with that. Okay, moving on. Thursday. Thursday, we're playing Minnesota. 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 This time here. I feel like we keep playing Minnesota Minnesota because we keep making that that noise (laughs) sound. Well, we play them three times because they're in the other uh, same different same conference, different division. Recently, we've just been saying Minnesota a lot. Right. Yeah. Regardless. Anyway. So that's on Thursday. What do you think about that game now? Uh, Minnesota's terrible, so the Sharks (laughs) should win. There you go. Lundy will like that one too. <laughs> Done. <laughs> yeah. Moving right along. Yeah. Saturday's game. Saturday's game uh, against Ottawa. Mm-hmm. So the return of Chris Tierney. Oh yeah. So Demello got moved. He's no longer there. That's right. Um, but Chris Tierney will be coming back. And we were talking about him in the live because he is a pending RFA RFA yeah. this summer. Wouldn't it be great to have Chris Tierney back uh, on the team I'd next love summer? Love to have Chris Tierney back. Maybe they can make a trade. Who knows. Anyway. Makes a whole lot of sense to me. He's a guy that, like we were talking about with Barclay Goodrow during the live, right? He's a guy that's played 11 out of the 12 positions. You move him up and down. He plays center, but you can put him on the wing, mm-hmm. whatever the case is. Chris Tierney, same thing, right? So if Jumbo is going to maybe take a little bit more of a step back, uh, this is the guy that plugs right in. Right. No problems with me. So, uh, yeah, I would love to see that happen. Now, we were talking maybe he's like a third-round pick in terms of trade and whatnot. I think the Sharks would much rather have Chris Tierney well, than whoever they're going to someone in the last said Tyler Ennis was traded, and he was a fourth-round pick. So oh. they're saying fourth-round pick would be better. Okay. Or more more likely. So I like that. That's not bad. That's One not thing bad to remember about that game against Ottawa, it being in uh, San Jose, is that it starts at 4 p.m. It is a weird yeah. start time for a Saturday game. So, yeah, earlier game, 4 p.m. Don't be late. Keep that in mind, because if you show up at 7 for puck drop, <laughs> you're, you're missing the game. Yeah. So uh, there's that. Sunday. Now, this is where we were going to talk about the uh, spotlight that right. we had, right? Yeah, we, we talk more into it uh, in our spotlight episode, right. which you can go check out. It's a real short thing. But it's uh, Gamer Night, uh, or Gamer Day, I think is what it's called. Okay. Gamer Day at the Tank. So uh, it's the first time that they're doing it. It's an NHL 20 tournament that you can enter into. I think it's limited to 50 spots. I could be wrong. But it's fifty dollars, and mm-hmm. but that also includes a ticket to the game. Uh, the tournament starts at ten thirty in the morning, and it's also daylight saving. So don't forget to set your clocks. Not that anyone does that anymore because they have phones, but uh, <laughs> you're going to be groggy and tired, and just be ready for it. So uh, anyway, ten thirty a.m. start time. Yeah. Uh, and there's some good, cool prizes. One of them being you can ride the zamboni, get a zamboni ride, and uh, okay. Set the, oh, you're setting the clock. Setting nice. the clock. The other is. Uh, uh, the championship, if you make it to the championship, you're going to be played up on the Jumbotron, which is pretty cool. Yeah. So, yeah. Totally you nice. Get a big I love crowd. That. Yeah. Well, you know, we've got uh, quite a few guys that play NHL 20 with us, so I'm expecting to see you guys out there. Yeah. Uh, whatever name you pick uh, as your name that might show up on the Jumbotron, uh, please shout us out. That would be excellent. Put your name in TFF. There you go. Yeah. By the way, if you happen to notice, I picked up the Timo clock when I was changing the time there. You'll notice that the Timo clock is down. Again. Again. Now, the last time we had the Timo clock down, Timo scored a hat trick. Right. And I think you said he also got an assist. I think he had an assist, yeah. Okay. Uh, Aaron thinks that his performance with the one goal, one assist is not worthy to be uh, brought back up. Um, I, I, I disagree a little bit, but we're going to keep it down. And if you want to explain a little bit why, why do you feel that way? Because it's not Timo time. It's not Timo time. Because he hasn't been performing well enough. Okay. <laughs> he's not consistent enough. One goal, one assist isn't, isn't uh, he's good got enough. Four games this week. We'll okay. see at the at next week and next week's show. We'll see if we prop it back up or not. Keep your eyes focused on that clock for next week. We'll see. Uh, That's four home games. I'm gonna give you. Could the, do some damage. You are the judge and jury on this. You get to put that up if it's need. Fine be. with me. All right. Very good. Okay. So that game again. Uh, there's a 7 p.m. game. 7 p.m. Uh, Sunday. So that and who are we playing again? Uh, uh, Colorado. Colorado, yeah. yeah. So that's going to be one of those run and gun type games. Yes. Colorado is a very fast, very talented team. Uh, great forward core. Great everything, They really. are missing Miko Rantanen. Okay. So that's one of their big, big guns that will be out of the game. Okay. He's actually out for a while, a couple more weeks. I know because he's on my fantasy <laughs> team. 
my big money fantasy thing. Speaking of fantasy, <laughs> let's go ahead and jump right into that Speaking real quick. Fantasy. Now, my big league, which is not part of these ones uh, that I've been doing for 15, I don't know, 15 years or so, mm-hmm. um, this is our last week. We ended our regular season and we start playoffs next week. Now, I can't remember what the settings I put on our leagues for here. Bear with me, I'm sorry. So uh, I'm gonna have to look at that. I, if it is, then here's the final standings. Okay. Um, and so here's League One, and I am in third. I couldn't catch him, but got pretty close. Okay. So I'm still in third place, I'm still in the playoff spot. Top six of the 12 make playoffs. Um, and then League Two, which up over here, I am destroying <laughs> everybody in this league. I have a 20 point lead wow. uh, over the second place team just insane so um, not to say the championship is mine but we'll see we'll see how many injuries I have on my team that's probably the only thing that could derail me right now okay not, not to be too cocky I'm just like I'm very happy I was always happy with that team ever since I drafted that team I was very happy with it like I was happy in the Who, whoever's playing fantasy knock this guy off his high horse will you please <laughs> Very good. All right, anything else you want to you plug or anything right now? Yeah. We're all good to go? Yeah, we're good. Okay, so again, keep your eyes on the clock. We'll see if you pull this one up. Again, it's not going to be me. I'm leaving it all up to him whether or not we're allowed to bring that clock up. So for Super Producer Jason, I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. We will see you guys next week. Next week. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, check out our other content, especially interviews. You can interact with us directly through social media at The Fin Factor and on Instagram at Fin Factor. And don't forget to join our live streams on YouTube. Visit our website at thefinfactor.com where you'll find all of our episodes as videos or podcasts. You'll also find our exclusive merchandise to help support our show.